Meanwhile, the Nigeria Employers Consultative Association has said the COVID-19 pandemic stopped about 74.2% 4, of enterprises' operations in Nigeria. The acting president of NECA, Taiwo Adeniyi, said this at a press briefing held on Thursday to announce the results of a survey the association conducted to gauge the specific impacts of COVID-19 on businesses. He said, and I quote, the outcome of the research showed, among others, that 74.2% of surveyed enterprises have stopped operating due to COVID-19, while 15.8% are either fully on-site or teleworking. Over 90% of surveyed enterprises noted that limited cash flow was an impediment to operations, and over 90% stated that demand for their goods and services had significantly reduced. End of quote. He commended the government for efforts to curtail the spread of the virus and for the introduction of fiscal and monetary measures to ameliorate the impact on businesses. The acting president, however, expressed the association's concern that organized businesses were left to weather the challenges alone. And joining us live is Jeremy Dan Okai, who is the head strategy and policy development bank of Nigeria. He joins us now to discuss. Good afternoon, Jeremy. Hi, good afternoon. It's Thank a pleasure you. to be here. Thank you for joining us. Now, 74, we're talking about 74.2% of surveyed enterprises that have stopped operating uh, due to COVID-19. Isn't that a huge number? And how will this number impact the economy? Oh, yes. Uh, without a doubt, um, it's a huge number. And um, I, I think the impact is, um, is clear and obvious to us. But, but you see, before we sort of, of, for us to understand the impact uh, that this would have to the economy, it's important for us to first dimension how important businesses are to any economy, not just Nigeria, any economy. And to do that, I'm only going to use two data points um, and use Nigeria as a case study. So one of the data points is the contribution of MSMEs you know, to the GDP. And the second data point is the um, uh, contribution in terms of employment of work of, of, of your labor force uh, uh, in today in Nigeria. So today, the MSMEs contribute over 50% um, to our GDP. They employ over 84% of our workforce. Now imagine, let's, let's, the statistics you, you mentioned about 74%, uh, which is approximately maybe 75, of MSMEs being impacted by the COVID and you know, not operational. Imagine if, let's assume, and this is a big assumption, that that percentage or the sample size used for the survey is a true ref representation of the size of the market. That means we're talking about 75% of 40, 41 million, which is the number of MSMEs we have today. And that means we're talking about 30, 30 million MSMEs who are impacted by the reason of COVID. So imagine 30 million people or 30 million businesses not being active. And we've already mentioned that they contribute 50% of, of, of GDP. And we also, we also mentioned that they employ about 84% of the, of the labor force. So you can just imagine that what it, what it does to em, unemployment. The last um, N, NBS stats that was released, um, uh, Nigeria uh, Bureau of Statistics on employment, or unemployment, we have about 23% of our active workforce un, unemployed. And NECA today in that same report is also saying that those um, unemployment rates will rise to about 30, 35%. So clearly, if businesses are out of uh, business, so to speak, you would have a large portion of your unemployment rate rising. People are unemployed, and that's what will happen. And where, what is the impact of, of unemployment? People go to crime. Because at the end of the day, you have people who are not productively engaged. They can't get a job for obvious reasons. They can't go into business for obvious reasons. They must feed. What happens? So we're thinking about the level of crime. And we could see that happen when during the lockdown. You heard about you know, people going to people's houses and you know, just doing all manner of things. We are, we, are, we are actually going to be treading in murky waters because this is really dangerous. And the other impact of it is on the economy because it's going to shrink, right? There is also a school of thought that we're actually going to go into a recession. So you're looking at shrinking economy. You're looking at increasing unemployment rates, which will most likely you know, lead, lead to increasing crime. So it is difficult. I'm not a prophet of doom, but we are actually in, in very dangerous waters as, as, as a country. Interesting. Uh, if we move away a bit from that now, uh, oil prices have dropped, as you know, which is also a major so source of revenue for the government. And all, almost everyone is looking up to the government for solutions. Now, how will the same yeah. government raise funds for these businesses to be able to mitigate the impacts that you've already established and explained there of this pandemic? Um, you know, this is a very interesting qu question. Um, 
yes, we. I, I think I think it's obvious to us the the obvious fact that we're a mono economy. We all depend on on oil, which is the reason why this is actually an issue. And um, now, but we need to look at it from two phases. There's the recovery phase and there's a the growth phase, right? When we look at the growth phase, and I'll come back to the recovery, because right now we are in a, in a recovery phase. So the question will be how then, and, the, and this is the main purpose of the government, how then do we ensure that as a country and as people and as businesses and as private sector, we actually recover from the impact of the pandemic and what must be done? But you see, in the growth phase, right, the things you will talk about are the things about diversification. You talk about privatization, you also talk about taxation. How do you bring people into the tax bracket and ensure that you, know, you get more people paying and you're actually using that money for infrastructure and you grow the economy? That's the growth phase. So when we talk about privatization, diversification, it can happen now because for, for, for obvious reasons, we must recover first. But now, when, because we're in a recovery phase, what would the government have to do you know, to sort of help businesses? The first thing first that everybody did, even in private sector, what we did is to look at our costs. It's important that we save costs. So we need to look at the cost of running the, governor, the, the government. How do we ensure that a, the recovering cost is brought to the you know, uh, minimum level possible? That's one most important thing. We're all doing it in private sector, so it must happen in the government. Secondly, by virtue of the pandemic, we've, the government has actually raised money. So we have intervention uh, um, funds and palliatives coming from the World Bank, coming from IMF. This is a time for responsible governance. That money needs to be deployed to where it is used or where it is needed, and that's the SME sector. It's important that we have these monies deployed to it. Now, to credit to the government, you know, some of the palliatives that they've, that they've come up with are very useful. So they've come up with, you know, the 100 billion health sector fund. They've come up with the 50 billion MSME funds. We need to see traction. It's important that businesses have access to this money because one of the things that also is in that survey report is the fact that cash flow is a challenge for MSMEs and businesses. So people must access this money. It's very important for people to be able to access this money, right, to be able to, you know, get their business back on track. And most importantly, I must mention, the government cannot do it all, do it all alone in, mm -hmm. in this recovery phase. Mm -hmm. The government needs to galvanize the private sector. Mm -hmm. If the private sector can put their hands together with the government and everybody work hand in glove, then we can recover. So the private sector itself, what would they need? It's important for the government to actually then listen, because I, I do understand from where I see it, I understand that the private sector is also speaking to the government to say, look, there are certain things, especially the financial in in industry, there are certain things that we need. So the government is using, you know, it, there's, a, there's a what I like to call a stick approach. So there's the LDR ratio that the government is insisting to, which is forcing banks to lend to MSMEs. That's good. But most importantly, there's also the carrot, because you must balance it. There's certain concessions the government must give in terms of policies, right, to ensure that, uh, you know, the, finance, the financial industry are actually keen and open, sorry, are open to lending to Jeremy the MSMs. Danokai. Very important. Jeremy, thank you very much. Jeremy Danokai, thank Sorry, you I can hear you. Can you coming. hear me? Uh, we can barely hear you. There's a disconnection there. Thank you for your time and your thoughts.